Okay, I'm your grandmother, and I'm going to give you some advice. Don't take any wooden nickels. It means don't get involved with jackasses. <laughs> it's Gina, and it's Steven, and he's fiddling with his microphone, so that's what you hear in the background. Stop. Let me, let For... me, let me get it right, and then you can start again. Listen, I need to do this one last adjustment before you start. Okay. All right. I think... I think I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing? (laughs) Listen, this isn't Joe Rogan's podcast. We have a shoestring budget over here, okay? (laughs) We really need to do video so you can see what's going on. It's Gina and it's Steven, and this is our podcast, Don't Take Any Wooden Nickels. What did my voice just do there? That was an octave higher than normal. That was weird. Um, Okay, gosh, we sort of took a break we fell off um we fell off yeah hey before we get going mm-hmm. you know have you ever watched uh like a football game or or even a baseball game where when they're having a little conference in the middle of the field they uh they hold their hands over their mouths so mm-hmm. that, so the tv can't pick up what they're oh, saying oh yeah they can't read their lips that's what you just did it looked like you were hiding oh, so i yeah. couldn't read your lips well, I, we've got these little foam squares that, you know, help in, in studios to, like, deafen the sound, right? So there's not an echo. And uh, I was holding it around my microphone. I didn't realize that will hinder our communication because you can't anticipate what I'm going to say. You can't read my lips. You can't read your lips at all. But, boy, does my audio sound better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like six one half dozen the other. Right, right. <laughs> anyway, so we've, um, we've been on a hiatus. We actually took all of our podcasting equipment with us uh, to North Carolina. So while we were on vacation at uh, the beach, and when we actually went and uh, did a little visit to this cool cabin in Pilot Mountain, which otherwise known as Mount Pilot on the Andy Griffith Show. We learned that. Well, so somebody we know, uh, uh, your cousin actually, I think said that on the Andy Griffith Show, they referred to... Mount Pilot or Pilot Mountain as the big city. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So they're coming down from Mount Pilot, that kind of thing. Which is so funny because after spending, I don't know, we were there for three, four days. Yeah. It's not a big city. It's a very quaint, cute little town, and, and we, we really adored it. We were staying in the foothills of Pilot Mountain in yeah. what they call a tobacco cabin. And... um we were allowed to take the dogs, and it was just a really great time. So we did bring the podcast equipment with high hopes that we were going to record from the mountains of North Carolina, uh, and we didn't. So here we are. <laughs> we were too busy dealing with the springtail situation. I don't even want to talk about that. You know? <laughs> I don't. That's going to be funny. That's funny. It is. The Springtail situation is hilarious. I hate them so much. I think they're still crawling on me. Okay, so these woods were dense and had a lot of um, really wet leaves, Mm -hmm. dead leaves Mm -hmm. on the ground. And dogs would go out, do their business, come back in, and they weren't itching. The dogs weren't scratching. They never scratched and itch. But somehow Gina noticed on her dog a little black flea-like looking creature Mm -hmm. crawling around in her coat, her hair. Mm. So we did some research. Since we're veterinarians, we determined what was crawling on our dogs easily with a simple Google search. Google search search did everything we needed. (laughs) And we found out that these things are called uh, springtail fleas. Yes, springtail fleas. All they do is get on your dog and ride around. They like moisture. So that turned into a whole thing. That was a whole thing because <laughs> we're in North Carolina. We're not around either of our veterinarians, you know, <sighs> to get like a prescription for fleas or what have you. So we went the homeopathic route and I found a health food store in Pilot Mountain, which was such a cute store. That downtown area was so adorable. What but- was the stuff called that we ended up spraying all over our dogs? It smelled really good. Yeah, well, it was. It, I mean, yeah. it was a mixture of essential oils. So it was like clove and cinnamon. And I don't know. I'm, I'm making up what it was. But the dogs didn't like it. It was strong for them. Right. <laughs> they were like, get away from me. I mean, I don't think the springtails liked it either. Well, that's what kept us from, from doing a podcast in at the cabin. We were so busy with that. We were. We were kind of obsessed with that. Uh, <laughs> freaking springtails. Oh my God. I never want to see one again. It's weird because it's like they're not that 
harmful, I don't think, because they're not biting, but no. they're just, who wants bugs They're just hijacking, anywhere? they're just hitchhiking on our dogs. Right, right, right exactly. Um, so, you know, being around people, being around family, because we go on vacation with the family, and every night, every day, we're all going, what do you want to eat? What do I want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Should we make dinner tonight? Well, I don't like seafood. You do like seafood. You know, it's all these questions flying everywhere. And it brings us to something that we've kind of touched on already with Stephen is that I like to say Stephen's not a picky eater. He just knows what he likes. And it's fewer things than most people like. And I, you've actually really opened up my mind and my perspective towards this because you do have to deal with a lot of <laughs> annoying, unnecessary, yeah. snide comments, opinions, glares. You get a lot of oh gosh, weird looks. Yeah. Like, huh? And why don't you just talk about Ugh. what you've been going through for really the better part of your life? <laughs> yeah, I like the way you put it. Uh, I do really know what I like, and I don't mind eating the same stuff that I really like. Um, I've tried plenty of things over the years, right? but it's really strange. This whole food thing. As soon as you mention that you don't like a certain food, a restaurant gets mentioned. You say, no, I'd rather not do that. I don't really like that kind of food. Mm -hmm. Or you're at dinner and somebody starts asking you questions about it and you say, no, it's not really my thing. I don't know what it is about that particular topic that people have feel like they can just almost attack you you for your choices in this yes like what you don't like insert whatever crab cakes let's call it crab cake sure Shrimp? you don't like crab cakes have you ever tried crab cakes i mean i'm actually guilty of doing this yeah. to you yeah early on i was because i'm like oh babe you've never had my crab cakes i'm sure you get that too true and now right. that you know we've been together for a while i i'm starting to see the the error of my ways because it's irritating and i will say that i haven't tried every single food that i've decided not to eat uh mostly because a lot of your taste or what you're interested in tasting or trying has to do with how it smells to you so there's a lot of stuff that i think doesn't smell great and i think to myself i don't really want to put it in my mouth you know i don't know that that's unreasonable for me to say that but it's a it's a thing I've, and i've really run into a lot of issues you know in the kind of work i've done for many years you know we'll go out to really nice dinners at nice restaurants and a lot of times those are seafood restaurants and seafood happens to be one of the things on my list that I almost eat zero of. Uh, and so... Although I will say, in North Carolina, you did try some grouper, I think, and you liked it. It was pretty good. So what happens for me, uh, I'll try things if I've had a little drink, maybe. Mm. Right? My inhibitions are reduced a bit. And right. I'll like, I need shot. one drink, and then I can do yeah. it. <laughs> um, and I don't... I would say, you know, most of the time, my sniffer ends up being right. Like right. I still taste it and I go, nope, I was right in the first place. I shouldn't even have tried it. It's gross. No, thank you. <laughs> but it's just this weird phenomena that, that people think that as soon as uh, you mention that you don't like something, they can just sort of the entire table sometimes decides that it needs to be the next topic we all talk about. And then you're by yourself kind of trying to defend your your choices about what you like to eat. Mm -hmm. And everybody's just, you know, kind of piling on. But I also think that's interesting if you say, hey, I uh, don't eat X because I have stomach issues around that. Or, oh, yeah. Or, or what if you said, I can't eat shellfish because I have allergies. Everybody leaves you alone. No one will ask You're you exempt. a question. You're exempt. So, but if you say, yeah. I don't eat shellfish because I think it tastes like doo-doo, mm. then you are just raising your hand and asking for trouble yeah it's a weird <laughs> yeah. societal yeah like i don't know if it's cultural um thing that we've we do as a society and it is so weird it's really weird and and we were talking about this saying you know is it because if i make fish or i eat fish i want you to share that same experience of tasting it and we can compare notes on well that was real good fish or you know but you won't eat it, so then I'm like, ah, well, I'll never know what he thinks about it. Is it a weird subconscious thing? Why do we do it? I don't know. You know, and another thing, 
almost everybody has something they don't like, right? Right. So what I tend I don't to like do, scallops. So I what think I, they're disgusting. Right. And you're allowed to not like scallops. Sure. So what I'll do is find that thing that somebody doesn't like. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, well, why don't you like it? You know, <laughs> well, I just don't like the taste of it. Boom. Right. There's your answer. I just have a lot more things I don't like the taste of. Mm-hmm. Right. But and people will argue with you and say, but you've never even tasted whatever it is. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes mm-hmm. I haven't. So tasted how do you it. know you don't like it? Smell. It's all about the smell. Hey, I always use the example. I know it's extreme, but you know, poop smells pretty gross. Yeah. And what if somebody told you, hey, my poop tastes pretty good. You oh, should try it. God. Even though it smells really bad, are you going to put it in your mouth? No, I mean, and that's really gross. I my know. dog does sometimes. Yeah, but, but you're not going to. If it just smells gross to you, why would you eat it? I don't understand mm-hmm. why you put something in your mouth that smells gross. I've got a very diverse palate, I guess, honey. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a pretty simple eater. <laughs> so, have you ever thought about just telling a white lie at the table? Yeah, and I have. Have you? There have been times. Okay, I've used the old. Oh, man. The last time I ate this, my stomach did not agree with me. And then usually they back off. Oh, gosh, that sucks. Well, mm. sorry about that. And then we move on. Because you don't love spicy food either. Not super spicy food, right? Okay. I'll eat some stuff uh, that, that isn't overly spicy, isn't overly hot. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, it really does mess up their stomach. So I can say that. I have said that. You have. You know, but so I you've, to, you've, yeah, you've used that. It's just to get off. People. Have you gone the extra step and actually said... That's an allergy for me. Not yet. Yeah. Why like, are you are you afraid to? You just right. don't feel comfortable lying. What What's if, what if they say, Okay, well what happens to you? <laughs> you know, well then you gotta think on your Right. Feet. <laughs> I gotta be quick and go, Oh man, my hands start swelling up. Your uh, hands start swelling up. I can't up. breathe. Uh, you know, you got an epi pen on you. I think what I need to do is get an EpiPen and just carry it with me. Mm. And then as soon as people start talking about it, I bring it out and go, this is why I carry this around. Because they just <laughs> never know. I got so many allergies. There's a lot of things I just can't eat. And then everybody will feel sorry for me. Everyone leave will me leave alone. me alone. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what I need to do. Well, when I was a server years ago, they told us if anyone, and we were supposed to ask the table, you know, are there any allergies in this group? And if anyone had Oh, a peanut allergy or a shellfish allergy. We had to take that very seriously. And we had to, we were instructed to actually go to the chef and tell him, hey, table whatever has blah, blah, blah. Oh, right. So it's just funny to me that it's like they don't care if it's just because it's your choice. Right. They only care if it's actually going to inflict harm onto you, <laughs> like bodily harm. <laughs> so that's the out, right? That's the solution yeah. is just make them think that there's a liability case. I mean, you can up, do that you know? certainly when you're eating out, but right. I think that you have a problem doing it with family. Yeah, right? family too, right? There's always that uh, that family member that makes a great dish mm-hmm. and they're like, oh God, I make the greatest clam uh, pasta. I don't know, whatever, right? Something gross to me. I wouldn't eat that either. Well, that so. doesn't sound good. Yeah. I, well... <laughs> And, you know, everybody loves it at the table, but me. And it is. It's weird when, when family members get annoyed about it. Yeah. Oh, well, what am I going to cook for Steven? Actually, it's so easy. He's got a pretty, you know, <laughs> decent list of foods he likes. So it, it got us thinking, how many other things in life do people think that they can interject when you say you don't like it or you've never tried it or you've never done it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one because... Uh, I think movies Mm -hmm. sometimes, right? Like if there's a classic movie that everybody's seen, Mm -hmm. you say, oh, you remember in the, uh, let's say The Godfather, that's a Mm -hmm. classic movie, right? Which I haven't seen. Oh my God. What? I'm just kidding. kidding. I've not seen any of them and I'm Italian. You're going to have to see this. You come over to my house next time. I'm going to get the DVD set. We're going to watch this movie (laughs) together. Do people still have DVDs? Well, (laughs) come over. We'll we'll stream uh, whatever. We'll watch it together. We'll Netflix, whatever. Well, you just busted me on a movie I've never seen. Talladega Nights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've never I'm seen just, it. Yeah. Another one maybe is um, places, right? Really popular, like oh, Orlando, yeah. like Disney World or something, or, or Vegas or New York. Like the big cities everybody seems to check out. Like maybe at least, at least been to once. Right. And their cities, are, they're kind of ranked. Like I've, I feel like at our age, everybody's probably been to Vegas once. And when that happens, so, you know, tying it all together, right? Like mm-hmm. the food and, mm-hmm. and a movie and all that, you know, but... <laughs> I just go, oh, okay. Well, man, I, I love it. Or, well, have you ever, you know, do you ever want to like watch that movie? Let me know. Or something like that. Or if you right. ever want to try it, let me know. I don't say, oh my God, you got to try it. You have to. <laughs> and I think it's just a good 
uh, lesson for people listening right now um, that have probably been guilty of doing this and didn't even think twice about it. They don't even think about it. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm one of those people. I never thought about it until I started dating somebody that had very, um, you know, specific things they like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. even like to say that you don't like a lot of foods. I don't like to um, put a negative to it because I don't think it's a negative thing. You're self-aware. You know what you like. So When it really becomes a problem is if there's none of the stuff I like left over to eat, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm really in trouble. So one more topic, kind of in this vein, after you divorced and you started dating before we met, did you ever meet people or ladies that did not like dogs or were maybe just cat people? You know... And how did you feel about it? I didn't actually meet any of them oh. because I, I I have to admit... Um, you filtered them out. I filtered them out. So if you? I saw... If they, if they explicitly <laughs> say uh-huh. they don't like dogs. Now, this is it just contradicts everything I just talked about with mm-hmm. the food stuff or with movies or whatever... Uh, but yeah, and if somebody so says, now you are that person, I'm that reverse. person. But you know what? I won't interact, and I won't tell them they're an idiot for not liking a dog. But I personally think mm-hmm. that you don't have to love dogs enough to have a dog because that's a lot of work. Not sure, not for it everybody. is. You're right. But somebody who just decides to say out loud, "I hate dogs," or "I really don't like dogs," I have a, I have think that's a problem because dogs are amazing. I mean, right. you might have had some bad yeah. encounters with some dogs, but most of the time. Dogs are just wonderful. They they give you mm-hmm. you know unconditional, unconditional love. love. Maybe you're allergic. There's a, again another reference back to the food. If they say, "Hey, I'm allergic to dogs," right. okay, that's totally understandable. Mm-hmm. I don't. They can't be around them. Maybe I, they had some traumatic incident with a dog before. So. But maybe I was so. bitten by several dogs, and I <laughs> still love dogs. Same, same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've bitten, gotten bit by a Shih Tzu, <laughs> which was more scary than it was. Um, you're lucky you made it out of that one alive. I know a Doberman Pinscher. Yeah. And a Dalmatian. Those were the a three Dalmatian. that bit me. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I've i been bitten. I had a, an incident when I was in my, uh, I don't know, I was like pre-10 or 11 years old, somewhere around there. And I had what kind? It was a German Shepherd. So it was interesting. It was, I'll tell the story real quick, but it was like this neighbor, I was out at my dad's for the summer and this neighbor had a, a female German Shepherd named Bertha. She used to be a police dog. She was very oh. well trained apparently, but she got a little older, was a little more grumpy. And I was going through. And you had drugs on you? And he smelled you? Is that. (laughs) Okay, I was like 11. (laughs) I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I, uh, no, I I had a real. So my dad, I had a bike. I could ride my bike, but I couldn't ride on the street. I could Mm -hmm. only ride it on the sidewalk, and I could only go so far on the sidewalk in each direction from his house. Like that was just the rule. That was the rule. Uh And it was my first day out exploring, and I went one direction, and it was fine. I turned around, came back, and I went the other direction. And the very next door neighbor, the next house, the bushes at the front of the house by the sidewalk were really overgrown, and they they were, like, infested with bees. Oh. So you couldn't really stay on the sidewalk. You had to either go in the street or cut through Mm -hmm. the yard, pretty Mm -hmm. much. And uh, so I cut through the yard. I got off my bike and walked my bike through the yard. Through the yard with the German Shepherd. I didn't know it was there yet. Oh no. my god! And I'm just I'm I'm walking along and I hear this rustling in this tree in the front of the house, like n- n- next to the house, like almost like a pine tree type tree. Oh, okay. And that's gotcha. where she kind of hung out, you know, in the cool dirt behind the you know by the Uh-oh. by the house under the tree. And I heard this rustling. I look back and I see her. You and saw she's Big like, Bertha. I saw Big Bertha, and she's maybe. 50 feet away, and I took maybe two steps before she got to me. You locked eyes? I looked at her, and I knew she was upset, and I took off running, dropped my bike. I took maybe two steps before she was there. She was that fast. Mm-hmm. She jumped on my back, like, knocked on me down. On your back? She, like, knocked me down. She, like, hit, hit me with her, like, legs or something. <laughs> she went into police mode. She went into police mode. I fell. She nipped my butt, like, uh-uh. a little bit of a nip on the top of my butt, and it hurt. And, uh... And then I started to kind of scramble. She put her mouth on my neck. No. Like right there and just kind of held me. <gasps> and every time I would start to move and try to, she would tighten it a little bit. No, she but, would But not. she didn't break, she didn't break the surface really, like the skin. And finally the owner comes out, calls her dog off. Holy smokes. And she takes me in 
and uh, tends to my wounds a little Aww. bit. And like, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that was. What was, did she say to Bertha? Just you know, good what dog. was the command? Mostly a good dog. I don't good know. Good dog. Said. Yeah, she did what she was supposed to do. She kept the you know kept the riffraff you know from <laughs> doing Those bad things. Old boys. Yeah. So she, I don't know what the command was. Holy I was, moly! I was all I heard was her breathing and her heat, the heat of her breath on my neck and snarling and sound in so my. So wait, neck. why didn't you grab your hands and like yeah. pull her jaw yeah. apart? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, that's just what I would yeah, think to do. Yeah, that works real well when you're 11 and there's a trained German shepherd that has like, you know, like a million pounds of pressure or whatever they have oh with their jaw. Oh my God, babe. Yeah, their bite force You're is lucky to bad. be alive. Yeah, but you know what? I still love dogs. You do? Yeah. I was going to say, if somebody uh, has a reason to be scared and traumatized from a dog, that's that's it right there. Yeah. I, I was riding my bicycle, similar but different story in our neighborhood. And I think I was riding on the street Mm. and, uh, I don't know, maybe four doors down from where I grew up in town, they had a Doberman Pinscher and that thing came up behind me and bit me in my butt. Why is it the butt? I don't know. That's two stories about dogs biting butts. Maybe because it's stationary on the seat and the legs are pedaling and moving and they can just go after the butt. Um, but that hurt. I remember of course crying and everything was Sure, I was dramatic yeah. about it, um, but I was fine. Yeah, you know. Oh, I'm but glad you made it. It was that. scary. Yeah, that's scary. We're giving a lot of reasons for the people that are the dog haters right now. Yeah, but again, okay, fair enough. That's a good point. Uh, a lot of a lot of reasons why you you know you could be like, oh God, I don't like dogs. But I think it's the I don't know what it is. It's not so much that you don't want a dog in your life or you don't want to be around them, but to say you just totally dislike all dogs. It's not like I say I hate cats. I will never own a cat because I don't like their fur everywhere. That's why I have a hyperallergenic dog that doesn't shed, you know, yeah. and cats also make me sneeze. The smell of the litter box alone is so disgusting. <laughs> That's pretty gross. But if I ha- there's a cat right there and they're, you know how they oh, yeah. arch their back up and, you know, rub, rub onto your shin. Yeah. And, oh, I mean, I just about melt. Yeah. But I'm not going to take one home. So that's where I find it weird when somebody goes, no way, I hate dogs. Right. Well, they haven't been around them a lot. Yeah, I, that's I can what understand that too, right? Because mm-hmm. some dogs are scary. They sound scary. But back to your original, like your question though, because that was one of the questions I would say, hey, how do you feel about dogs? I have a dog. Oh, when you were dating. When you I was mean, dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But typically it's rare, I think, how many people love both equally. It's almost like there's dog people and there's cat people, right. you know? So if I saw sure. somebody who was a real super cat person i knew there was like well there's probably a maybe a 50 50 chance they're like into dogs too you know yeah seemed like it was one of those things i could assume but i don't know i, I think that most people are uh at the end of the day mm-hmm. i'm just rambling so we'll cut that out <laughs> no we're gonna leave it i like it okay so to wrap up this whole podcast today uh talking about so many different topics but going back to the food issue the very first thing we were discussing um if you were in a life or death situation and there was only you could only go fishing and catch fish and fry them up on a campfire to survive would you do it of course i would okay Okay. yeah you gotta do it i mean i know it's it my body needs it i'll force it down okay hold my nose whatever tricks i have to do (laughs) to get past the flavor Mm -hmm. that i don't enjoy smell the campfire while you're shoving it down your mouth yeah Yeah. i could do it in that case sure (laughs) thank you so much for listening to our podcast it is season two steven's now on don't take any wooden nickels with me gina and i promise we're not going to let you wait for the next podcast as long as we did this past one if you have time please subscribe and if you can even write a review that i guess helps the algorithms and stuff share it tell your friends we'll be back thanks so much for listening it's don't take any wooden nickels this is grandma marie with the help of god i'll see you next week take care and know that i love you and what and that's it